Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today's video, how does prayer work? First thing I want to tell you all is that I am not a religious person. I am a spiritual person. There's a big difference, okay? I am also not going to talk about anyone's personal belief systems or who they may represent as some sort of God, okay? Because there's so many different religions out there, um, different ways of doing religious antics, etc. Okay, so today I want to concentrate on what is prayer, what is the intention of prayer, how to do it. Wow, let's just go with those ones straight away instead of doing more on the list, right? So what is the intention of prayer? doesn't matter which religion you're back from, which um, book that you've read, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, the Korah, whatever, Quran or whatever else you've read, okay? When we pray, what we're doing is opening a communications gateway to them, whoever them is to you, okay? It may be that you want to pray to a god it may be that you want to pray to an angel or archangel down through the spirit guides ascended masters even prayer to a lost or deceased relative okay so this is what it is it's a communication avenue to connect with them okay in some religions they say that you've got to put your hands like this what does this represent okay lots of different theories out there why we put our hands together when we pray okay go and research that one because today is all about why and how we do it okay so I commonly say the best way of learning this is when we close our eyes and you call out to someone in another room that you want a cup of coffee hey, I want a cup of coffee. So we're projecting our intention. Our intention is our thoughts of what we want, correct? So we are intentionally asking somebody in another room who we can't see, can't feel, can't hear, etc. So it's that communication where we're projecting our thoughts, okay, through our vocals. But when we pray to them, sometimes we can use our vocals. But a lot of the time when we pray, we do it on our inside voice. Because all these entities, whatever you believe in, they all talk telepathically. And they hear telepathically. Okay? Telepathically is when we can read our thoughts where we don't have to actually physically say the words, right? So when we pray, like when I'm asking someone in the next room to go and get me a cup of coffee, please, always be grateful, always be respectful, okay? We're actually, instead of talking to someone in the next room, we're talking to someone or something that is out in the ether, universe, whatever, so whenever I talk to my girl, because she's a celestial body, I don't know what she is and I don't care what she is because to me it doesn't matter. The fact that she's there, that she knows that I'm listening, that she listens to me, the fact that she does good things for me, I don't care who she is, okay? So as long as I know that she's there, how do I talk to her? How do I talk to Jesus? How do I talk to Muhammad, Buddha, and all the rest of the Ascended Masters? All I do is, like when I talk to a cup, ask someone else for a cup of coffee, I project my thoughts out there. So it's not just me talking to myself, it's projecting it. Okay, so as soon as you have that thought of how do I project, think about when you're asking someone in the next room for a cup of coffee. Hey, can you get me a cup of coffee? Now take the words out of your mouth and do it again. Your brain is already projecting the words. So this is how we pray, okay? Now the reason why I'm doing this video today 
is because I've received an email. Someone's asked, what is prayer? So I hope that clarifies how we do it, right? Can we pray for someone else? Of course we can, okay? Now, we must remember a few things here. Free will and life contracts. I've got videos on this channel about life contracts and free will. Go watch them, okay? Just scroll down through my video list and you'll find all my videos. So when we are praying for someone else, generally the first reason why someone prays for someone else is to get them out of a bad situation. It could be health reasons. It could be financial woes, okay? So what we've got to do when we pray, we're asking them to interfere with free will and life contracts. Do you think they're going to do that? I don't, unless it's something that is in free will and their life contracts, okay? So when we've got a prayer for somebody else, all right, okay, and we're asking for, I don't know, let's just make up someone. You've got a cousin who's not well, okay? So we're praying and we say, oh my God, please kill my cousin, okay? If it's in your cousin's free will and if, because we all have the ability to heal ourselves. I've mentioned it very <clears throat> many times. I've got a broken neck, <clears throat> bear with me, and I've also been diagnosed with a brain tumour. I still have broken C2 and C3 in my neck, but my brain tumor has gone because I willed it away through my free will that I don't want it anymore. We can do this. I've got videos in my video description on how to cure injuries and illnesses. Okay, we will it into existence. So when we're praying to them to interfere with our cousin to heal them. If it's in our cousin's free will and life contracts, okay, they can come in with their angelic intervention and they can cure us. They can fix our financial woes. They can give us that in the right place at the right time when things go right for us, okay? Especially if it's lotto numbers, okay? Or winning in other ways okay or you just find that lump of money in the gutter and you're looking around there's no one around and you think well what do I do with this now that sort of thing I'm not saying just steal it try and find out who owns the money first right okay so we've always got to create that good energy okay so I'm not saying go and steal <laughs> okay don't do that it's bad we get charged with the police for that one okay so getting back to prayer Okay, can we pray for someone else? There's no harm in it. There's definitely no harm in it. Okay, if you look at the universal laws, which I've got videos about the universal laws, how to use the law of attraction. Ah, law of attraction. What's the first rule? Trust and believe. Okay, giving consent that this can work. So using the law of attraction, oh, please make this person better. We're attracting in the law of attraction, yeah? So this is how all the universal laws also mix in with prayer, okay? <clears throat> can we pray for somebody else? Of course we can. But we have to remember here, guys, a lot of times our prayers don't get answered, okay? Why do they save one person in a tsunami, yet 250,000 others perish? We can't assume and we can't simply ask that why question because we don't know the purpose of that one person who survived. We don't know the life contracts, the life lessons and that free will of all those who did perish in a tsunami. If you know the one I'm talking about, about a decade ago, it killed like half a million people. Okay, we can't judge why the angels interact with some of us and they don't for others okay and this is the beauty of understanding prayer that we are putting out an intention 
where we want help for ourselves or for others, but sometimes they don't answer those prayers because it's in our life contract that we're not going to receive it, okay? How many people in the end of the day, they sit at the end of their bed and they put their hands like this and say, oh my God, help me, my life's in the poo poo pee doo section. What do I do? Give me some direction. We are communicating with the heavens. We are putting out that intention. But sometimes we don't get answered. And that is where we have to sit here backwards in our chair, breathe and relax and say, maybe my prayer wasn't answered because it doesn't need to be. I am here in the perfect opportunity at the perfect time where I'm learning a lesson. Okay? Think of it this way. If we've got to learn how to be generous... Are they just going to grant our prayer to give us a million dollars? No, they're going to make us appreciate the value of being generous where we give our last dollar to a homeless man. Wow. So that prayer for a million dollars will never come in, correct? Okay, we've given our free will, we've given our consent, but if it's not in our life path, and our life lessons, we won't receive it. Okay? So, the next part of this prayer section today that this person has asked, can we ask to change the minds of other people? Doozy! Doozy! No, we can't. Let's just go there with some certain politicians around the planet and some, let's just go there with certain companies making pharmaceutical companies, um, pharmaceutical products, if you know what I'm talking about. Can we pray to the universe to get these people to change their minds so they stop doing what they're doing? Absolutely not. This is where we have to allow. This is where we sit back and still show compassion, understanding and most of all, forgiveness. What a doozy this one is. When we can say, I appreciate what you've done, even though in its most heinous and the most gregarious act that you could ever do to somebody else. But I still appreciate you. This is where we get filled with the love of God. This is where we get the grace of God coming in. Okay? So, sit back, stay calm, ask your questions. To the heavens, universe, the source, whatever you want to call them. A lot of names get thrown around, right? I don't have any name for this girl who I talk to. I know she's female because I've heard her voice so many times. And I've seen her on many occasions. So I know she's a female. So I call her a girl. But at the end of the day, I don't care who she is. For she is protecting, loving me, regardless. So, as long as we trust them to be looking after us, everything happens for a reason. Let's just reiterate on that one. Every single thing happens for a reason. If we're in a car accident, we get an illness... We get an amputation. Things in our street collapse with an earthquake or tsunami or a tornado. Every single thing happens for a reason. Don't judge. Just allow it to occur and show that mercy and grace of God that it one protected us. And if you're sitting there saying, I wasn't protected, I got really sick, I had this, I had that, I had that. 
Don't sit there as a victim ever. Okay? Don't sit there as a victim. Sit back and think, I've just had this really bad thing happen to me. What am I learning from it? How can I turn this into a positive? And most of all, how can I utilize this event to help others? Because isn't that, after all, the reason why they're here helping us? Because they help others? Don't we want to be angelic ourselves at the end of the day? Isn't that what I preach on my channel every day? How to be like them? So take that authority and take that power and just sit there and say, what would the angels do in this occurrence? If I'm praying to them to give me a better job, help me, I need a better job. How do I go out of and get that better job? Because this is what spirituality is differently to religion. Religion is when we rely on them to make it happen. But spirituality means that they are within us and giving us that courage, strength, determination and passion to get out there and successfully do it ourselves. So when we pray, and believe me, I pray every day to them, how many of us out there are always asking for something? We're asking help me i need you to do this i want you to do that help that person do that how many of us do that i'd say 98 percent of it it's not me because i pray every single day and guess what i do when i pray I sit outside, my first thing I do of a morning, I make a cup of coffee and I go out in my backyard, I look into the sky as I'm sipping my warm drink to warm up and I say, God, I hope that you're here, which he always is, right? Please know how much I appreciate you. Please know how much I love you. Thank you so much for allowing me to wake up this morning. Thank you so much that this has happened in my morning. Thank you so much for the opportunities that are coming to me today, whether it's driving to work, going to the shops, looking after my daughter, all those other opportunities where I can be like you and express that outwardly to others. Whenever I do that first thing in the morning, I sit there. Some days tears come down my face because I connect to them and I feel their presence and it makes me feel... Ah! Oh, wow. So maybe when you pray next time, don't ask for anything. Ask them what you can do for them instead of them doing something for you. Start showing that grace and mercy back to them. And we've all only just got to close our eyes and think the words and then project it like you're asking someone in the other room for a coffee. Okay? Because this is when magic occurs. Okay? Hope this has helped you today. And I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.